everybody, welcome to this short walkthrough of English language paper one, question five with me, Mrs. Potts from the Net English Director team. This question is all about descriptive writing. It is worth 40 marks and we spend 45 minutes on it. So here's an overview. You will be given a choice of two tasks. The first one, asking you to write a description based on the image, just like the example shown. The second option will ask you to write the opening or a part of a story. And we strongly recommend that you always choose the description. The image that you receive for the description will more than likely have a link to the extract that you have read whilst answering questions one to four meaning that you can recycle some of the ideas from that. We do have a six part structure that we recommend you to use and I will go through that shortly. Now what you've got to remember is that the image is a springboard, meaning that you don't have to describe the image in the way that it's presented to you. If the image is inside, you can still start by describing the weather outside. If the weather is positive in the image, you can still change it to be negative. You need to use sophisticated language in your description, meaning that you need to think about every single word and phrase that you write to make sure that your writing is as powerful and engaging as it can be. Finally, your writing needs to have a clear structure. We need to have a clear beginning, we need to have a shift in time and tone, and we do recommend you to use a, stru a circular structure. So this is our famous six part structure. Please check out page 17 in your recipe book for a more detailed version. So re we recommend that the first part of your writing describes an overview of the setting, the weather and the sky. Your second paragraph zooms in on a key character or an object or a detail. So for example, in this image, I would zoom in on the dilapidated house. The third paragraph is the same as section two, but it's in addition to. So if you zoom in on an object or a detail in this paragraph, zoom in on a key character. And remember, if there isn't a character in your image, Drop one in, go beyond the image. The fourth section is a shift, a change or a flashback. And again, remember that to go beyond the image. The fifth section is the impact and it's describing the impact of the shift. And the final section is returning to the overview from section one. So, for example, going back and describing the weather, but in a slightly different way. So, for example, starting negatively and ending positively. So we've got that circular structure. This question is worth a mammoth 40 marks, meaning that it is 25% of your overall GCSE. And this question tests three different skills. It tests the content of your writing, so the ideas and the vocabulary and the use of language that you are applying. How your writing is organised and structured, so making sure that you've got a clear beginning, shift and end and that you've got clear paragraphs that are linked. And also your technical accuracy, which includes your SPAG, your sentence structures and your vocabulary you get an overall time of 45 minutes to complete this question. And we recommend that you spend five to 10 minutes planning your response, 30 to 35 minutes writing your response. Now remember, the examiner doesn't want pages and pages and pages. They ideally want a side and a half to two sides of A4 of well-crafted description. And you also need to check your crafting. However, I would recommend 
that you spend five minutes checking your writing throughout the time that you were spending writing it. Don't leave it until the last five minutes because if you realise that you've forgotten something, it could be too late to put it right. So I strongly recommend that after you have written each section, that you spend a minute or so checking it carefully. So this is the first step of your planning. You've got the image, and the first thing that you need to do is to create a semantic field. So you need to choose words and phrases that spring to mind when you are looking at this image. Remember to recycle previous descriptions. You don't need to start from scratch all of the time. Think about any golden examples of golden openings that you've used and recycle them, make them fit to this image. So spend a couple of minutes doing that, but also check out pages 22 to 30 in your recipe book for further support and materials. And this is what step one should look like once completed. So around the image, I've included some of the words and phrases that I always use in my description. No matter what the image is, I'll make them fit. So feel free to spend a couple of minutes to recycle some of my examples and see how you can make them fit. Step two in the planning procedure is to now choose your focal points. So what you've got to do now is you've got to split your image up into the different sections to fit our six part structure. So for example, the first element of your image that should be identified is the overview of the setting, so the sky and the weather. You then need to decide, well, what are you going to zoom in on? What key object or detail in the image are you going to focus on? Where's your character going to be? Are they going to be inside the house? Are they going to be outside the house? What's your flashback going to be? And how are you going to develop that flashback? So I'm just going to talk you through how I would split this image up into the different focal points. My first paragraph would always be on the weather in a negative sense. I would be describing the dark sky, the gritty wind, the piercing rain, even though it does actually look like it's a little bit sunny in this image. My second section would be on a key detail. And in this sense, I would straight away zoom in on this dilapidated house. I would zoom in on the different elements of it, how the paint looks cracked, how the windows look shattered and broken. And my third section, I am going to include my character. And again, I'm going to continue this thread of negativity. So my weather is negative. The key detail is negative and thirdly my character is negative and my character is going to be just outside this image looking at this house. My fourth section is going to be a one sentence paragraph and I you always use the exact same one. Time wasn't always so cruel and I use this paragraph to signal a shift in time. And what I really like about this one sentence paragraph is, first of all, it personifies time, which I'm going to get marks for. Secondly, it uses an apostrophe correctly, which I'm going to get marks for. And thirdly, it uses an ellipsis, which I'm also going to get marks for. The final thing I'm going to get marks for is by using it as a paragraph or effect. So a one sentence paragraph that changes the tone of my writing. My next section is going to go back to my character, but instead of my character being presented and described in a negative tone, I'm going to switch it to a positive because my character is going to go back in time. They're going to go back to a time when they were happier and when they actually lived at this home and this home represented love, family and happiness. I'm then going to describe the house again, 
but this time, instead of describing it from a negative stance, I'm going to describe it from a positive stance. And it's really, really important that you create at least two detailed paragraphs on the image because you get marks for making sure that you match the purpose of the task. I'm then going to create a circular structure by going back to the weather, but instead of it having, it, instead of there being dark clouds, instead of it being howling wind, instead of the peace and rain, it's going to be positive and it's going to be symbolic for my character's previous happiness. And the third step of your planning is to add more detail to your focal points. And what I mean by more detail is add some language features, a simile, a metaphor, personification, and some sensory details, and also colour. Remember again to recycle elements of your previous description. And again, check out pages 22 to 30 in your recipe book for supporting materials, especially page 30 for this task. And this is what a completed plan looks like. So we've got the different focal points and then as well as having that semantic fields that we built up in step one of our planning, we've also got some key pieces of well-crafted language. So for example, we've got clouds streak the horizon like scars on skin, lovely simile. Another simile here, branches stretch out like cobwebs, endlessly intertwining. His or her skin cracked and broken, like forgotten pottery, tells the tale of a thousand regrets. See if there are any other language features, features rather, from page 30 in your recipe book. And this is why we say that you should be planning for five to ten minutes. Because there's actually quite a lot of things to do. There are three detailed steps. And once we've completed these steps, it will be so much easier to produce a detailed, connected piece of description. And you are now ready to go. After completing that detailed plan, you would have 30 to 35 minutes to write your response. Now, I have included crafting as the title of this slide. Because what you've got to remember when you were creating a piece of description, you have got to craft it. You've got to think about every single word, sentence and paragraph that you were writing to make sure that it is your best. And try and see your descriptive writing as an art form. You constantly want to be improving it. So here's some key ingredients that you must remember to include. The formality and tone of your piece of description needs to fit the purpose and the audience of the task. We want to include a convincing character whose perspective we can follow. We want a range of vocabulary that is accurately spelled, consciously crafted linguistic devices, showing the examiner that you have thought about every single word and phrase. We want structural features. We want that one sentence paragraph. We want that circular structure. We want that shift of tone and we want those links between paragraphs. Ultimately, we want writing that is engaging for the audience to read. A range of connected ideas, accurate sentence construction, a range of punctuation, a range of sentence forms, making sure that you, are, that you are using your different sentence forms. A consistent use of standard English is essential and that's why we ask you to check your writing after every paragraph and making sure that you have got control of your grammar. And here is my golden opening. Now in this first section, you will notice words and phrases that I used from my semantic field. 
and I always recycle and refine those. You will also notice I have included two sentences for effect. Take the time to read through my golden opening and please feel free to recycle anything that you would also like to include in your crafting. And you are now ready to craft your full response. Please make sure that you follow your plan. You should be looking back at it on a regular, regular basis. Include the key ingredients. Use the relevant pages in your recipe book and think about every single word and phrase that you write. You now have 35 minutes to complete your response. If you need a little bit more help before writing your complete response, this slide includes a range of short little tasks for you to complete. And that brings us to the end of this walkthrough for English language paper one, question five, descriptive writing. Remember that this question is worth 40 marks, 25% of our English language GCSE. We must prepare for it. Please make sure that you email any additional crafting that you do to your English teacher or to the director who's based in your school. Please apply the planning routine and the crafting routine to any other pictures. Thank you for listening.